Welcome back. This CT artifact lesson is about beam hardening. So the hardness of the X-ray beam just refers to the average energy of the X-ray photons. And so beam hardening refers to an increase in the average energy. So here's how beam hardening artifact works. It's caused by an excessive amount of X-ray absorption by very dense materials in the body. And so the beam is literally hardened or increased in energy. Beam hardening then looks like streaks extending from those dense materials in the body. The image on the left is actually a very good example of the traditional appearance of beam hardening. This patient was shot in the face with a shotgun, so there's several little metal pellets inside of the face. These very dense pellets have excessively absorbed or attenuated the x-ray beam. This confuses the CT processing algorithms and it results in the streaks that you see on the image. And a patient doesn't have to get shot in the face to cause beam hardening artifact. The image on the right here is also a classic example of beam hardening artifact. In this case, for whatever reason, the patient's arms were left down to their side. And because of that, the very dense bones in the arms, which were then aligned with the very dense bones in the spine, absorbed a significant amount of the x-ray beam. This increased the average energy of the beam, reduced the intensity of the beam, and it gives us this very streaky appearance through the posterior side of the patient. There might have been a very good reason that the patient's arms were left down to their side, but because of that additional dense material inside of the x-ray beam, more of those x-ray photons were absorbed and it resulted in these streaks, which we call beam hardening artifact. There's also other ways that beam hardening artifact can appear on a CT image. The image to the left is a patient that actually has some type of cerebral aneurysm clip. These clips are often made of metal, and as a result of that very dense material inside of the brain, it resulted in streaking beam hardening artifact inside of the brain. The image on the right is another example of something that can sometimes happen that results in beam hardening artifact. This is a patient that was receiving just a routine CT abdomen and pelvis in the portal venous phase with contrast. But the contrast that you see on the colon is not from the CT scan. This patient had recently had a barium enema study with very dense barium used in the colon. The contrast used in CT is not nearly as dense as this barium, and it's for this very reason. The barium overabsorbed the x-ray photons coming out of the CT x-ray tube, and as a result of that, the computer CT algorithm was confused and it resulted in a significant amount of streaking, which again, in this case, is called beam hardening artifact. Because an excessive number of those low energy x-ray photons were absorbed and that increased the average energy of the x-ray beam. So that's the beam hardening. There's a few kinds of beam hardening artifact that get their own name. Metal artifact and edge gradient artifact. Both of these artifacts are still considered beam hardening artifact. But of course, the image on the left is a picture of a dental implant that's made of metal and it's resulted in streaking on the CT image. Because it's a metal artifact, we will sometimes just refer to that as a metal artifact, but know that it is a type of beam hardening. Because that little metal implant inside of the patient's jaw is absorbing an excessive amount of those low energy photons and confusing the CT algorithm. The image on the right is another form of beam hardening that we sometimes call edge gradient. The reason it's called edge gradient is because we have a very dense area of contrast, that's the superior vena cava, sitting next to the pulmonary arteries which are not so densely enhanced with contrast. These two areas sitting side by side have a very large difference in density, or you might say they have a very large contrast gradient or density gradient. And as a result of that, the dense area of contrast is absorbing a significant amount of x-ray photons. The portions of the patient that aren't so densely enhanced with contrast are not absorbing nearly as much x-ray photons. And as a result of that, we get this edge gradient artifact. It's a kind of beam hardening artifact fact and it looks very similar. It results as black and white streaking across the patient extending from the very dense areas. So how exactly do you prevent beam hardening artifact? You can't rip out the patient's dental implants, but there are a few things that you can do. One thing to remember is proper positioning. And this includes, for example, proper arm placement. If we're scanning the patient's chest or abdomen, we need to get the arms above the head. If we're scanning the patient's neck or head, then of course the arm should be down. We want those dense materials out of the x-ray beam. Also remember proper gantry placement. 
If at all possible and when it's appropriate, we should angle the gantry so that the dense materials are outside of the x-ray beam. One time that we can definitely do this is when imaging the head and face. If there's metal artifact in the way and we can avoid it, we definitely should. One more way to prevent beam hardening artifact is through special software. There are several vendors that make commercially available products that help to reduce beam hardening artifact when these other things are not an option. So that's an overview of beam hardening artifact.